What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at Mud Slap Crocodile here in the Ultra League edition of the Halloween Cup. Now we've already seen it showcased on this channel in the Great League edition of the Halloween Cup. It's a massive core breaker to so many teams in that meta but does it work as well in the Ultra League? We're going to be finding out in today's video. Now to round out the team I've got my shiny costume Drifblim in the lead and Genesect Chill Drive as the safe swap. Now in terms of coverage for this team in particular I think the Shock Drive Genesect would perform a lot better than the Chill Drive Genesect that I'm running. Unfortunately, I didn't have any Shock Drive Genesects in my storage. I didn't raid any of them, so it would have just been what I was able to catch from GBL. And of course, you can't trade Genesects, so kind of just stuck with what I've got. I did have a couple of Chill Drives, so I did end up building one. But yeah, I definitely think the Shock Drive would be better because all three Pokemon lose to Tapu Fini, but with the Shock Drive, we can beat the Tapu Fini there. As well, we can hit for neutral damage up against the Steel Bug types that do sort of cause a few problems for the other two Pokemon, especially Scizor, as it can hit for super effective damage against both the other Pokemon there. And as well, up against Pokemon like Jellicent or Tentacruel, it's just nice to be able to hit them for some damage that isn't resisted. And of course, you do sacrifice the massive super effective damage up against Nidoqueens and Giratinas, but I feel like the other two Pokemon can put in work against those Pokemon, so it's not really the end of the world to sacrifice that damage there. So enough about this team, let's get into the question of the day. Which Spice Pokemon would you like to see me run in the Halloween Cup Ultra League Edition? Let me know in the comments section below, and with that being said, let's get into the battles now. All right, so going into the first battle here, we lead into a Tentacruel, so this is a fairly good matchup for us, although we do have to look out for the Blizzard in case they are running it. We're going to see we go for a Shadow Ball straight away up against the Tentacruel. They let it go through, and they do throw after one more Poison Jab, so this can only be a Scald, so I'm going to let it go through. It does a decent amount of damage, but not enough to warrant a Shield. We actually get to the Shadow Ball here on the CMP tile with the next Scald, and Shadow Ball does take out the Tentacruel, so that is great they're gonna come in with Tapu Fini a very tricky Pokemon for me to deal with unfortunately but I'm gonna go for the Shadow Ball we land it and that is really nice because this should put them into range where I can just take them out with a magnet bomb but unfortunately they have a ton of energy loaded I'm gonna let the first surf go through but they're gonna get to a second one before I can even get to my charge move and this is now a little bit tricky here. We're going to over farm, go for the Magnet Bomb, but they catch perfectly onto the Nidder Queen. So an amazing catch by my opponent there. But we're going to go and catch ourselves and we even get a full Mud Slap through, which is perfect. They go for a Poison Fang. Of course, it is resisted by the ground typing here. They're going to commit to the Earth Power, but they're not able to get there. And my opponent realizes that that was going to be the game winning play there. And unfortunately, they don't get there, so they just concede the match. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we lead into an Umbreon. Very bad lead for Drifblim. We're going to swap straight away, and my opponent actually comes in with a Nido Queen, which is definitely not an answer to the uh, Chill Drive Genesect here. I realize that they're obviously wanting to keep it away from the Drifblim, but... <laughs> We're still going to be able to win this match up here or get both shields from the Nidoqueen. Queen. I really don't care which one I get. I actually take them out with the Techno Blast there, so that is perfect. We've gained Switch Advantage and Shield Advantage with the Genesect. Can we get to the charge move? No, unfortunately not. But we're still in a very good position here, although Umbreon is still pretty difficult to take on here. They're actually going to bait me with a foul play there, which is an interesting choice. They're now going to go for a last resort. That does a lot more damage now. We're going to go for the Earthquake straight away. My opponent catches it, but they catch it on a Tentacruel, which is pretty good for me because we land. It does massive damage. And now they're so low that I can actually come in with the Drift Limb and fully Hex Farm them down. And the reason I do this instead of just staying in is because I'm going to have a ton of energy loaded. I will be able to permanently debuff this Umbreon. And they also go for a Snarl there, so they don't go for the charge move straight away. Meaning I'm able to get the back-to-back -back Icy Winds before they even throw a charge move. We've put the Umbreon into farm down range, comfortable farm down range for the Crocodile. And actually the foul play doesn't even take me out. I don't know if they undercharge or that's just the result of the double debuff. But I'm able to get to a third Icy Wind. They choose not to shield it there and I'm able to take that game. 
So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we lead into an S Cavalier. So a very good lead for me here. They're going to swap into a Crobat. So I'm just going to stay in initially. Go for an Icy Wind. Icy Wind does big super productive damage and as well does debuff their attack. They're going to go for a charge move here. It could be a Shadow Ball. It's just a Poison Fang. That feels bad, but we're able to get to another Icy Wind here. We actually undercharge it, but my opponent does shield it up. Now we're going to swap into the Crocodile here. And you might be thinking, why on earth have you swapped a Mud Slap user into a Flying type? But the reason is, we of course do resist everything the Crobat can throw in terms of charge moves. They're going to swap into the S Cav here. We go for a Crunch there. Not realizing we're not going to get to a second crunch but really we just wanted to fish for that defense drop unfortunately we don't get it but it doesn't matter we can go straight for a shadow ball here up against the s cavalier and from this range it does easily take out the s cav we're going to see what they come into next they've actually got a nido queen so we're in a pretty good position here i'm going to go straight for the techno blast uh sorry the icy wind and that does about half of Nido Queen's health. We're just going to let this charge move go through. It's actually the Shadow Ball. It takes me out, but I can come in with the Genesect. Fully Fury Cutter, farm them down. I'm so close to the Techno Blast now, and my opponent realizes there's nothing they can do, and they do concede the match there. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we lead into a Giratina. Now, this is a fairly neutral lead here. I'm just going to no shield the first move here, hoping that they do bait me. And they do. They go straight for a Dragon Claw, which is great. I'm going straight for the Shadow Ball. I don't expect my opponent to shield in this matchup. And they don't. They let it go through. It does huge damage. I swap into Janisek. They're actually staying in. They've over farmed a ton. I'm going to let the first move go through. And oh my god, it's a Shadow Force. That nearly takes me out. And I'm going to be honest, I completely forgot about Shadow Force Giratina. It, I know, of course, it has just been in raids, but I don't raid, so I've not done a single Giratina raid, and I've not seen anyone using it, so it just completely slipped my mind that it can even learn it, and yeah, that is a reason for running Shadow Force there. It can take your opponents off guard, like it just took me off guard, and unfortunately, because we know shielded the Genesect, they've got a charm, a load of Ninetales, that's absolutely going to run through my team, whereas with the Genesect still alive, we could have just probably swept their whole back line because they had a Nidoqueen queen as well but unfortunately my opponent is able to take that game there so gg's really nice play there by them into the next game we lead into a tapu fini and yeah this is not great tapu fini very difficult to deal with it with my team they go straight for a surf we're gonna go for a shadow ball here Almost all the time the Tapu Fini does shield in this matchup, so I'm thinking maybe I will start to bait them with Icy Winds, but of course when I did that <laughs> they start shielding or they start no shielding, so I just don't seem to be able to play that Tapu Fini matchup at all. They're going to swap into the Dragalgy here, catch the Icy Wind, but that's fine. This debuff to their attack should mean that I am able to tank two Aqua Tails. Unfortunately, they do just get to a second one here, but because of that debuff, we do tank it, and we have so little HP that we should be okay here. We're going to go for a charge move straight away. They do have a Galarian Weezing, and this is a bit tricky here because Galarian Weezing, of course, does learn Overheat, so that will easily one-shot the Genesect, probably even one shot it even after debuffing its attack we try and catch the move there but unfortunately they don't throw they hold on to their energy so very nice play there and at this point they're going to just farm up to 100 energy swap out into the tapu fini we're going to go for the magnet bomb here and from this range magnet bomb nowhere near enough damage to take them out this is where it would be really handy if we had the shock drive genesect we have to let the surf go through because an overheat will easily take us out we're going to go for the magnet bomb and my opponent actually lets it go through is this a win condition for us or do they have enough health that they can tank and get to two more fast moves and get to the charge move yes they can and unfortunately we do go down to the overheat there so ggs to that opponent they're very well played into the next game we lead into a shadow crowbat they're going to swap straight away into a sizzle this is a very tricky matchup for me 
and that was kind of strange. I don't think we missed any fast moves, but it just looked kind of weird. We're going to go for a shadow ball here, hoping to get a shield advantage, and we do get it. We're going to catch or try to catch the next Night Slash, but unfortunately, my opponent doesn't throw straight away. We're going to shield it up. It's just an Iron Head. I say just an Iron Head. Of course, it could have been an X Scissor, which is super effective. We can just barely tank the next Iron Head, and we do manage to get the Mud Slap farm down. I'm going straight for an Earthquake here, which is perfect because they actually come in with Tapu Fini. So landing that Earthquake is going to be vital here. We're going to come back in with Drifflim, go for the Shadow Ball straight away. Fortunately, they're not able to make a catch. We do get the final shield from this Tapu Fini. We're actually going to shield up in this matchup here because I know I'm going to be able to outpace this Crobat to the Charge Roof. And we get there even before they get to a Poison Fang, which is great. Technoblast takes out the Crobat and now it's a race. Can we get to the Magnet Bomb? Yes, we can. Before they get to a Surf, a Magnet Bomb is enough to take out the Tapu Fini and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we lead into an Alolan Muck. Pretty tricky lead here. Of course, we do resist the Poison Jabs, but I don't really know why I'm staying in here. Trying to catch a Dark Pulse, and it looks like we're able to, but I don't really consider that a catch. It's not resisted. It's kind of just them throwing anyway, and now they're able to make a catch into Jellicent, so that is definitely a catch. And unfortunately, this is another scenario where it would be better if we did have the Shock Drive, because that catch actually would have done huge damage with the Electric Typing Techno Blast. But unfortunately, they do, of course, resist the Steel and Ice type moves we're throwing here. Can we get to another Magnet Bomb? No, we just faint as we get to it, which is super unfortunate. And luckily, we do have a Shadow Ball loaded. So I'm just going to go for it straight away here, hoping they know Shield, but they do shield up the match. Shield up in this matchup, sorry. We're going to let it go through. And they do bait me with a Bubble Beam, which is great because we, of course, can comfortably tank that. We're going to shield now, and they go for another Bubble Beam. They're now going to swap back into the Alola Muck. But we have a really good response here in the form of Crocodile. They can only hit for resisted damage here, and unfortunately, once again, kind of strange there. I think I should have got a move through, but it doesn't really make a difference. I'm able to fully mud slap farm them down. They're actually going to come in with a Nido Queen here, so we go for the Earthquake. Earthquake does huge damage. I'm able to mud slap farm them down, and at this point, I'm actually going to bait them with an Icy Wind. You guys probably realize that I really don't bait an awful lot, but at this range, I just want to get that Icy Wind off before they debuff my attack because I'm pretty sure they're going to bait me with a bubble beam but from this range I'm still able to hex farm them down. My opponent realizes that and so they concede the match. They saved about one second of their time there but whatever. We're able to take that game. GG to that opponent. Into the next game here, we lead into a Scizor, and this is another tricky Pokemon to deal with. We're going to let the first move go through. We can tank it. My opponent makes a brilliant catch onto an Umbreon, and ah, this, <laughs> this has gone from bad to worse here. Of course, we can come in with the Genesect, but Genesect, although it deals super effective damage with the Fury Cutters, takes pretty big damage from the Foul Plays. They even get to a second one before I choose to throw. And now I'm actually going to let the Foul Play go through. I know I can tank it and get to two Magnet Bombs here. But my opponent is going to shield the first one. I'm going to be able to get to a Techno Blast here. This will do more damage than the Magnet Bomb. But unfortunately, it's not enough to take out the Umbreon. And they do regain Switch Advantage, which is not ideal for me. They're going to go for a charge move here. I'm going to let it go through. It's just a foul play, which is pretty nice for me. They're going to come in with a Tapu Fini, and we're in a really bad position here. We've just got such low health on the Drift Rim that I thought there was really no point in me switching it in. I do farm up to the Earthquake and then don't even throw it. I, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. There's no point in me playing this out. There's no way we can win, especially when the Scissor comes back in, gets to a charge move before I can even throw. Night Slash takes me out. I'm actually going to go for a charge move here. I'm just wasting my own time. Uh, I'm not really sure why I do that. Crunch doesn't even take them out, and they're able to bullet punch, farm me down there, and take that game. GG's to that opponent there. They really won that game with that catch on the Umbreon really early on, so <laughs> well played to them. Into the next game, we have a really good lead with the Nino Queen, but they swap into a Scrafty. Scrafty, pretty tricky to deal with, with a Ghost type, but not for Drifflim. It looks like they lagged there, but then they might have caught back up. I'm not really sure. 
They're going to go for a foul play. I'm going to shield the first one. I do have an Icy Wind loaded. So I'm going to go for another one here and make sure I debuff their attack twice before I let any damage go through from the Scrafty. The foul play does land, but now it doesn't even do half our health, so that is great. We're able to get to another Icy Wind up against the Scrafty. They choose to no shield. I'm going to swap into Genesect and fully Fury Cut to farm them down. They're going to come back in with the Nidoqueen. Queen. We're going to go for a Techno Blast here just before they get to an Earth Power. And Techno Blast does get a shield back from this Nidoqueen, Queen, so that is fine. I'm going to let the Earth Power go through. I'm barely able to get to another Techno Blast. And will my opponent double shield the Nether Queen? No, we're able to take out that Nether Queen there. But unfortunately, they've got an Obstagoon in the back. So this is going to be very tricky. I'm going to shield up this Night Slash. Hopefully, they don't get a boost. They don't. I'm going to go for an Icy Wind, debuff their attack. I don't really think they're going to shield here. And they don't. And we're going to try and catch the charge move, and I'm able to catch this time onto the Crocodile. It's just a Night Slash, so I'm able to comfortably tank that. And now they will have to go for a Cross Chop to take me out. But because we've debuffed their attack, Cross Chop isn't going to be enough to take out the Crocodile just yet. I'm able to get to a Crunch here. Do they know their counts? Crunch is resisted, but we get a shield from the Obstagoon. And at this point... We have debuffed their attack, remember, so Night Slash, not enough to take me out. I get the energy for the Icy Wind, and from this range, Icy Wind is enough to take out the Obstagoon, and I'm able to take that game there. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game here, we lead into a Toxicroak, so a very good lead for us. They're going to say swap into Drapion. We're going to swap with our Crocodile here. They're going to go for a Charge move. This is actually very tough if they're running Aquatel, but it looks like they're not running it. They go for a Crunch. We're actually going to go for our Crunch straight away here, just in case they are actually running Aquatel and they chose not to throw it because I don't really want to take that risk. We probably could have just comfortably farmed them down. And at this point, they're actually able to farm me down before I get to another Charge move. But it doesn't really matter. Drift Bloom is a massive wall to Toxicroak. We're going to go for an Icy Wind here. Perhaps we should have just committed to the Shadow Ball. They're able to swap out there and preserve all of their energy. Going to save it up for the Genesect matchup here. Because they swapped there, I was thinking I should be able to get off my charge move before they can throw. But of course, they get a zero turn switch. So it's a CMP tie. I'm going to swap into the Genesect here. We have debuffed their attack. But Genesect is very squishy and two Dark Pulses are still going to be enough to take me out here. So perhaps there wasn't really any use in throwing that charge move. We're going to go for a Magnet Bomb here up against the Alolan Mark. We get a shield here. They're going to swap out. And at this point, I really can't afford to shield. They do have back-to-back -back charge moves already loaded. They're going to go for another charge move here. It is a Sludge Bomb that's still resisted. We can tank it comfortably. We're going to go for the Icy Wind straight away in this matchup up against the Alolan Muck. And it's just about a race. Who can get to the second charge move fastest? They're out there now, but we've now gained the energy for the Icy Wind. So we're going to be able to go for it here, win the CMP tie up against the Alolan Muck. And I'm able to take out the Muck and take that game. So GG's to that opponent there into the next game we lead drift blim into a clefable so pretty tricky lead here they do of course massively outpace me for damage with the charm here we're going straight for the shadow ball not expecting a shield and shadow ball lands it does massive damage but maybe we should have just come for an icy wind debuff their attack and we might be able to survive this meteor mash and get to another charge move but unfortunately we're not able to now here in this matchup i don't really want to tank a charge move so i'm going to go for a charge move of my own just before they get to the move but maybe i should have just shielded once and fully farmed them down now i'm going to go for a techno blast up against this s cavalier it does land it does massive damage and we kind of have to shield in this matchup to ensure we get to another magnet bomb here up against the Escav, and this should be getting a shield from my opponent. And we're able to get that shield there. We're going to swap into the Crocodile. We're going to shield up this charge move. It could be a Mega Horn. It's just a drill run. Doesn't matter. Would have done massive damage. And now up against Drapion, we're going straight for a crunch. Of course they know shield it. I'm hoping for that debuff, but we don't get it. Fortunately for me, this Drapion isn't running Aquatel either, and that is going to be able to allow us to fully farm them down they go for another crunch but unfortunately they get the debuff that means we're not going to be able to tank a counter from this range so i go for the crunch here trying to get the debuff of my own we're not able to get it and we're 
fully countered down by the SCAV and my opponent is able to take that game there. So GG's to that opponent. Into the next game, we lead into a Drapion. Not a very good lead for us. I'm just going to let this charge move go through. I'm thinking maybe the Genesect is a core breaker to their team. And it looks like it is because they're now going to come in with a Mandibuzz. We go straight for that Techno Blast. It lands. It does massive super effective damage. They throw just before we get to the next Magnet Bomb here. They're actually running Dark Pulse, so that is great. It means we can over farm a lot more here. Go for the Magnet Bomb, and from this range, Magnet Bomb is enough to take them out, so I do regain the switch advantage there. They're going to come back in with Drapion. I'm going for a Techno Blast again, and once again, it goes unshielded, which is perfect for me. They can't even commit to the farm down because I would get to another charge move. They go for a Crunch. That doesn't do an awful lot of damage. We're going to come in with the Crocodile here. We should easily be able to tank this, even if it's an Aquatel. It is just a crunch. They've got a Nido Queen in the back, and that's going to be a comfortable win for me there. So, GG's to that opponent, and into the final game in this video here. We're going to lead into an S Cav, so a very good lead. My opponent swaps into an Umbreon, and to just ensure we win this mid game matchup here, we're going for the Icy Wind. We're going to debuff their attack. And I'm thinking, all right, surely with the Mud Slap damage, we should be able to comfortably win this matchup since we have debuffed their attack. But you're going to see this is actually super close. We're going to no shield again. It is a last resort. Another one will start to threaten and they might even be able to farm me down. We're going for the Earthquake here. An Earthquake actually gets shielded by the Umbreon. Who on earth sh shields an Umbreon? Apparently this guy and... That's a very smart play actually because it does mean they are going to be able to outpace me here. Unfortunately, we don't even get the move through there which is really annoying. We're going to go for a crunch here, but unfortunately they're going to be able to get to another charge move if they choose to shield here. And because we didn't get that fast move through, they're able to get to the last result and take out the Crocodile. And now things are not looking great. They're going to come back in with the Escav here, so we're going to count to seven. Switch and catch the Drill Run onto the Drifling, which is perfect. Drill Run is, of course, double resisted by the Flying Typing. They're going to come in with a Tapu Fini. We're going to go straight for the Shadow Ball here, and Shadow Ball will do some nice damage here. Put them into range where one Magnet Bomb should be enough to take them out. They go straight for a Moon Blast. That does take me out. We're going to go for the Magnet Bomb here, but we're actually going to undercharge it, and that might be the perfect under charge here if we can farm them down yes we're able to now we're gonna go for a techno blast here as it does more damage than the magnet bomb techno blast does huge damage and i'm gonna be able to get to one more techno blast before they can counter me down or before they get to a drill run and techno blast even resisted is enough to take out the s cav there and i'm able to take that game so that's gonna be it for today's video as you can see Crocodile is still a massive core breaker to a ton of teams here in the Halloween Cup Ultra League Edition. But unfortunately, the biggest thing holding it back in this meta is the abundance of Tapu Fini. I honestly didn't expect Tapu Fini to be as common as it is. And that's probably obvious by the fact that I've built a team where all three Pokemon do lose to it. So I really haven't helped myself out there. And of course, I've said it multiple times in this video. If we had that Shock Drive Genesect, we would have been able to deal with those Tapu Finis a lot more comfortably and who knows maybe we would have even been able to push for legend with this team but unfortunately we didn't have it and we weren't able to so yeah that's just how things go sometimes sometimes you just don't have the right Pokemon you need to make a team work but there's not a lot you can do about that. I will be trying out a few different teams now in the Halloween Cup Ultra League Edition. But remember, guys, if you did enjoy today's video, then make sure you leave a like, leave a comment, let me know. And as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you're not yet subscribed and you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications, so that way you're notified whenever I upload a new video. And with that being said, let's get into the shout outs from my previous video. So firstly, we got Mayhem who says, I'd say Dragon. Zwilus is a good pick on my say swap at the time. They were running Azu, Zwilus and Shadow Drapion and it works mostly like a charm. No pun intended. Of course, if they did meet charm with a Zwilus, then that wouldn't be working at all because charm would delete the Zwilus instantly. But yeah, I think Zwilus was a super underrated pick in the Halloween Cup Great League Edition and just the dragon typing overall. So next we got Eden now who says double water. It's already strong in open or any Ultra League Great League meta because water typing is so strong. So imagine it in this meta. 
Typically, you really only saw Toxapex in the Great League Halloween Cup as a water type, but there are so many other strong water types, and especially since I built a team triple weak to the water typing, it's kind of strange that we didn't really see too many others because otherwise that team just wouldn't have been viable at all. So definitely an underrated typing. And finally, we've got Yusuf Gurgis who says Galvantula OP, so many teams with dark and water types together. And of course, they do mean the electric subtyping, and I think it's a really underrated typing in the meta. I myself built a team that had Quillfish, Galarian Moltres, and Shadow Hornchcrow all together, and Galvantula would have absolutely destroyed it with the electric damage there. So with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.